So we're now going to take a very quick tour of the impairments that ADHD is uh, producing. And then at the end of that, I will talk specifically about recommendations that we often convey to adults and their families on how one might try to address these difficulties. I can't guarantee that you'll be able to address all of them, but here are the things, at least in the states anyway, that people are um, implementing in order to help adults with ADHD. By the way, I should have showed you this earlier. These are my sources of income, so you can see if I have any conflict of interest. I have a ton of conflicts, so I'm conflicted with everybody at this point, but I do work for all the pharmaceutical companies in the U.S. and Canada. Okay, the prevalence of adult ADHD very quickly is about 4.5%, 3.5% worldwide. It's actually more common in developed than undeveloped countries, but that has to do with survival rates of children. And we see ADHD varying across age, sex, social class, and so on, so it's not spread evenly across the population. But by adulthood, the normal 3 to 1 ratio seen in children of boys to girls has begun to become much closer, suggesting that there may be something about female ADHD that's a little bit later to manifest itself or at least to begin to produce impairments than we see in male ADHD. Eventually by adulthood they are equally severe. And by the way, our studies of women with ADHD show that there are very few differences between men and women with ADHD that are not due to the normal differences between men and women in general. So any differences we find, we find across all of our control groups, not just specific to the ADHD group. There's very little that is specific to ADHD in women. And I say that because there are books on the subject in the trade literature that have made claims to the contrary, but which are not based on any scientific studies. Female ADHD is not a qualitatively different disorder from male ADHD, but it does have, as we will see, some differences in impairments that are likely to be due uh, to the ADHD, and that has to do with role divisions in society. Now, we do know that only one in 10 adults with ADHD in the U.S. is currently diagnosed and treated, whereas it's six in 10 children are diagnosed and treated. So we've done a much better job with public mental health in the child psychiatry area Whereas only recently, as all of you know, has adult ADHD actually even been put on the radar screen of adult public mental health. And still there are many adult psychiatrists and psychologists who still do not understand that adult ADHD is in fact a valid disorder that needs to be diagnosed and treated. Now, over the next hour, I'm going to show you a variety of impairments as they stack up in adult ADHD, and we're going to look at each of these specifically, and then we're going to talk about how best that these might be managed. I don't know why that middle one hasn't come in yet. There it is. Ah, it was in order to be salacious, that's why. (laughs) Nevertheless, notice what's happening here. There, as As the child moves on to become the adolescent, to become the adult, there is this piling on of deficits that we see. And that's simply because the more domains in which you have access to, the more likely you are to become impaired in that domain. Five-year-olds don't drive, so driving can't be an impairment for them. But it can be once you get to, at least in the U.S., 16 years of age. Now, I'm going to be sharing with you the results of my own research, specifically a very large study, one of the largest ever done to date, on adults with ADHD. This was published last year in my textbook on adult ADHD that you see here. Kevin Murphy was my colleague on this study. And it took us seven years to do this study because this is a very thorough, in fact, it is the most thorough evaluation of impairments related to adult ADHD ever published. We looked at 146 adults diagnosed in our clinic with ADHD. Most importantly, we compared them to a psychiatric control group. It's easy to compare adults with ADHD to normal adults and get massive differences. But what we want to know is what's specific to ADHD? What is it that ADHD does that other disorders that we see in outpatient clinics, anxiety disorders, depression, relationship problems, personality disorders, drug use problems, What is ADHD doing that's specific, that's not necessarily seen in those other disorders? So this was a groundbreaking study because it's one of the few studies that has a control group with other disorders. 
And for the sake of science, that becomes extraordinarily important. So here's our control group. These were adults who came to the same adult outpatient psychiatry clinic at our medical school. This was an ADHD adult clinic, and these people came because they thought they were ADHD, but they weren't. Turns out that they had other disorders, and you can see that the vast majority of them had anxiety or mood disorders. Doesn't mean those two can't go together, by the way. Many adults with ADHD have them. It means that we found ADHD not to be present in the lives of these individuals. Their problems were entirely accounted for simply by the other disorder. Now, when we interviewed these patients, and from here on out, you will see three bars on every graph. You will see the adults with ADHD. That will always be the first bar. You will see the clinical control group and then the general population control group of adult volunteers in our study. And what you see here is that both of our clinical groups were quite impaired, as they should be. I mean, after all, they're being referred for assistance. There better be some problem in life, work, home, relationships, school, whatever, because no impairment, no disorder. In case you're wondering, where does ADHD begin and a sparkling personality leave off? <laughs> it's where impairment begins, and impairment is in a major life activity. Now, I want you to notice something here. Although there's a couple of areas where these two groups are close, in most of these areas, adult ADHD is a more impairing disorder. Now, this is based on self-report. We also interviewed them and others who knew them well about their childhood years, and the differences become even more startling here because you can see that even as children, these people are self-reporting much greater impairment across these various life activities than is the case for other psychiatric disorders. What you're going to see is the same pattern in every slide, which is going to allow us to conclude that ADHD is one of the most impairing adult outpatient disorders seen in mental health clinics today more impairing than anxiety disorders, depression, relationship problems, and other difficulties for which people seek outpatient treatment. Not as impairing in inpatient disorders, such as bipolar disorder, psychosis, schizophrenia, and so on, or even adult autism. Those are very severe disorders, but certainly more impairing than the traditional outpatient disorders that most people in primary care in particular would feel comfortable managing.